All right. Special thanks to everyone that is giving online and everyone that is helping to build this ministry here by serving and inviting people. If you have not yet, go to our website and register. Even if you are a member and you show up every single week, multiple times in person, still go to our website and register. It helps us to get everyone's contact information because there's a time coming when I'm going to need to call you on the phone and say, it's time to go. And if I don't have your information, that's going to be difficult to do. After you've registered on our website, make sure you uh, join our Facebook private group. That's where all the fun is, all the pictures, the videos, the live stream happens there. Shalom to everybody who's watching online in our Facebook group. All right, let's get into the message for today. Amen. Show them what we're talking about. What does it say on the screen? That's a commandment. Be ye, it's, is it okay for me to be angry? Yes, it is. Is it okay for me to sin? Absolutely not. Show them the Paleo Hebrew word for today. This word is very interesting. It only has two letters in it. Okay, remember our Paleo Hebrew is written from right to left. This first character is what? That's an ah. What's the last character? Pa. So this is a picture of an ox head and a mouth. And the word is anger. This word is pronounced op. What's interesting about that is because like in the streets, when we talk in streets, the people that come against us, we call them our ops. Isn't that right? Like the opposition. We don't even know that we're saying, yo, that's an op. That's somebody who makes me angry. We be speaking Hebrew and don't even know it. Most of our slang is Hebrew words. Go ahead and show them these words meaning. So the ox head means strength. It's a leader, authority. It also means first, and it's literally a picture of a head. The other one is a picture of a mouth, and it means to speak a word, to open, to say something, to make sound. What do you think that word anger means in ancient Hebrew? Using just those two. To speak. To speak. What is it? Strength. Strength to speak. That's good. That's good. What did you say? First. Oh, first to say something. Yeah, that's good, too. When you anger, you're like, bro, listen to me. Anybody else got something? First sound, that's good too. Go ahead and show them the ones that I picked out. I think, I think that, uh, right? Christine got them strength to speak. Now, here's the interesting thing. You have to make it into a form of a sentence. So go ahead and show them this last one. It's strong speaking. Strength is also strong. What happens when we get angry? We start trying to speak extra strong, saying it with our chest, right? All right, hallelujah. Now watch. Last night, we talked about a verse that I shared with you guys. Let's see how well you can finish this one. This is, we're not going to show it to him yet, but this is what Yahabashai said. He said, by this shall all men know. Did it say that you are Christians? Did it say that you are Israelites? No, it said by this, go ahead and show them that scripture real quick. John chapter 13, verse 35, it says, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. That's what he wants us to be is a disciple. What is the one thing that a disciple should have? Discipline, because if you don't have no discipline, you ain't no disciple. Does that make sense? You gotta go back and get some discipline. So he desires for us to receive the discipline so that we can be disciples. And here's how every man will know that we are disciples. It says, if ye have love, one to another. Amen. So it's our job to do our best to love everybody that we come in contact with to the best of our ability. But how many of y'all know sometimes you're going to have to love people from a distance, from a distance. We need to make that into a song right there because <laughs> some people are going to get on your last nerve. They're going to irritate you, provoke you. They're going to make you angry. Them making you angry. Is that a license to sin? No, it is not. It is a opportunity for you to prove that you have discipline. Every time something happens that starts to make you angry, it's an opportunity for you to prove that you are a disciple and that discipline is pouring into your life. You demonstrate that by what you don't do. Because when you had no discipline, you would do anything. You don't even know what you might do. Now you know all the stuff that you could do because you're thinking it, but you're not doing it. Amen. Give me a slide real quick. Let me show you guys this uh, definition for anger. Anger is an emotion that makes your mouth work faster than your brain. 
<laughs> right? Somebody probably need to take a picture of that. You get angry, and then you end up saying something, and then what you got to do? Oh, my bad. <laughs> you got to give that uncomfortable laugh. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean it. You know I love you. What? You shouldn't have said it if you didn't mean it. <laughs> you, lately, you've been repenting? I've been just reading your emails. That's all it is. I, I, I'm in your emails. I know. Anger is a strong feeling of intense displeasure, hostility, or indignation that results from a real or an imagined threat, insult, frustration, or injustice. It don't even have to be real. Like you can just imagine that is happening and it'll make you angry. We need to be in control of our spirit. Anger is broken down into three categories. You might want to write this part down. Check this out. We have rage resentment and indignation rage resentment and indignation we're going to talk about all three of those today it is expressed in three different ways anybody ever heard of somebody who's passive aggressive what they're doing when you say you're very passive aggressive right now they're demonstrating their anger in a way that is very nonchalant they're boiling they're ready to chop somebody's head off, but they're trying to control it. But they're still leaking out a little bit of that anger. That's called passive aggressive. And then there's the open aggressive. That's like, you just, I'm angry and everybody needs to know about it. And then there's assertive anger. Assertive, that's when you're like, oh, something happened. Everything else needs to stop. And this issue needs to be fixed so that I don't feel the way that I feel going forward. Now, out of those three, assertive anger is the way that we ought to be dealing with it. We can't let it slide because if it slides and then I see you the next day or you see me the next day and we haven't worked it out. And then next week I see you when you finally get to work it out, you go right into the open aggression, right? We need to make sure that we're being assertive with fixing these issues. Give me a, give me a slide real quick. Let's talk about this rage. What is rage? Dun -dun -dun. Dun -dun -dun. They don't know it, Jesse. They don't know. I don't know. Okay, watch this. <laughs> I was raging against the machine right there. You guys didn't, didn't rage with me. An explosive, uncontrolled expression of your anger. It's the early onset, right? It's that first thing somebody challenges you. The first thing that happens is your nostrils begin to flare. And what's interesting, that word, what was the word in Hebrew? It was op. That is the same word for nostrils. <laughs> That's the same word. Like you, you start taking in less air because your nostrils are flaring. You're getting less spirit in you when you get angry. You guys know spirit is breath, right? Somebody make you angry enough, you stop breathing. You... <laughs> Ready to pass out, right? It's not supposed to be like that. When somebody makes you angry so that it doesn't become rage, you take a deep breath. This word breath in Hebrew is rawak. That means you put in a whole lot of spirit to deal with that angry situation. Deep breath, and then you deal with it. Show them a slide real quick. This next one that we talked about is resentment. Who knows what resentment is? Resentment. Holding on to stuff, right? Holding on. Grudges fall in the category of resentment. It's when you should have said something. You should have been assertive, and you weren't. You weren't assertive, you just let that, okay. Some of us have a habit of saying it's okay when it's not okay. Ah, and you know what happens? You say, oh no, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. And then you go home and you sit there and you're like, none of that stuff was okay. You were supposed to say something. You were supposed to be more assertive. Let people know, hey, I'm not cool with that thing. That's the discipline that the Most High is putting in your life so that you don't get stepped on. Who ends up being the victim? You are because you let people walk on you. And then you build up this resentment. Show them a slide. I want you guys to see this. Resentment is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to be hurt. It's inside of you. It's not in them. It's in you. It comes up in your mind. Show them another slide real quick. Let's talk about this third form. What's that say on the screen? How we say it in the hood. Indignant. You acting real indignant because you ignorant. No. Okay, watch this. Indignation <clears throat> is righteous anger about an injustice. Usually it has to do with an oppression or an unholy situation. 
the most highs, anger falls into this category. Does that make sense? Watch, let me show you. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 27. Deuteronomy 29, 27 says, and the anger, that's the op, of Yahweh was kindled against this land to bring upon it all the curses that are written in this book. So this is what happened to Israel and what happened to the children of Israel. You guys need to see that we made him angry. That's why we got thrown out of our land and other people stole our name and our heritage and we're just starting to wake up now. We did something to make him angry. What do we do? We disobeyed, we provoked him, provoked him to anger. He didn't want to be angry with his children. He loves his children. What did we decide to do? We saw everything. Hey, that speaker right there is God. Oh, that drum right there, that's God. This, every single thing that was made out of wood or stone, we started to worship it. And he's like, no, that's not me. That's not me. That's not my name. That's not my name. So he got angry because we continually did that. Give me the next verse, verse 28. Watch what it says. And Yahweh rooted them out of their land in anger and in wrath and in great, will you say it? Indignation and cast them into another land as it is this day. How did you get here? You made him angry. Why did you make him angry? Because you were not exercising discipline. Don't no parent get mad at their child when they're doing, when they're being obedient. Ain't that right? If you're being obedient, the scripture, literally, if you do well, shall you not be accepted? If you do what is commanded for you to do, he will love you. If you are continually disobedient, he will be angry with you. Amen. All right. Show him a slide real quick. Because most of us learned how to deal with anger when we were kids. Is that dude happy? He not happy at all. Somebody stole his bike. I don't know what happened to him, but we learn anger in our youth. You need to recognize it in your children now. You need to be able to see it in their eyes, in their nostrils flaring, in the corners of their mouths turning down, the way that they ball up their fists sometimes when you say something, the way that they're defiant, and you need to get it out of them. Because if they grow up with that, they're going to be angry youth. They're going to be angry teenagers. And angry teenagers grow into angry adults. Some of the people that you mad at every time you go to work is one of these children that looked like him when nobody worked it out. Does that make sense? When you see your child demonstrating rage or this resentment, you work that issue out. This includes fighting, holding grudges, cussing. Oh, what about this one? The silent treatment. This, you, how are you going to threaten me with a good time? <laughs> You're not going to talk to me? That's cool. Because the reason we got into this issue was because you was talking. <laughs> so you just go ahead and give me the silent treatment. The silent treatment is the absence of working out the problem, actually. Sometimes you do have to be silent until you can calm down. But then we're going to need to talk through this thing. Ain't that right? Okay, watch. Plotting revenge. Something, something happened and you plotting revenge. When I go back to work, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take her food out of the refrigerator and I'm going to throw it in the trash. You plotting some evil stuff because you know they, they take your food when you at work out of the fridge. Okay, you guys got that part. <laughs> Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. I want you to see how we did this when we were children. The scripture says, when I was a child, what did I do? I spake as a child. I understood as a child, I thought as a child. Pause right there. When I was a child, what did I do? I spake, that's coming out of me. I thought, that's what I was thinking. Uh, I'm sorry, I spake, I understood, and I thought. Your understanding was very limited when you were a child. All you knew was childish stuff. Oh, you did that to me, so I'm gonna do this to you. Are you still children? No. So the scripture says, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now, this is how you know if you're a man or a woman. If you are still speaking as a child, understanding as a child and thinking as a child, you are not a man. You are not a woman. You are still a child. You need to grow up. How are you going to grow up? Discipline. Discipline is what we grow up with. Amen. When you come into the truth, you are still going to be angry. The difference is now you can't sin because you're angry. You have to be angry and do the right thing. Most of the Christians that I know, most of the so-called believers that I know, 
they have not yet experienced the joy of Yahweh. If you have experienced, you'll know there's nothing that can pull you out of the joy of Yahweh because you are commanded to give thanks for everything. So I'm commanded to give thanks. Even when something bad is happening, I recognize I'm still in the presence of the most high. I'm still breathing. I don't care how bad this thing is. I'm still breathing. Me still breathing still gives me another chance. Ain't that right? Give me Psalms chapter 16. Let's start this one at verse eight. This is how you do this thing to experience the joy of Yahweh. It says, I have set Yahweh always before me. Where's he at? He's always, my eyes are locked on the prize. It says, because he is at my right hand, I shall not be moved. What kind of moved? Moved at all. I will not be moved off of the path that I'm on. I will not be moved into anger. I will not be moved into rage. I will not be influenced by anything other than the Holy Spirit. You have to be able to say that in your mind and mean it though. And work on that every day. When these things come and it's like, oh, I feel myself, but I'm not going to let this thing have power over me to make me anything. When something makes you angry, you just made it a creator in your life. Because what did it make you? It made you mad. You can't make me anything. The father has already made me everything that he wants me to be. Amen. Give me verse nine. Check this out. It says, therefore, my heart is glad. And my glory rejoiceth, my flesh also rest, my flesh also shall rest in hope. Give me verse 10. He says, for thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. This is building up to this verse right here. This is Psalm 16, 11. It's our definition of joy. It says, thou wilt shew me the path of life. In thy presence, where? In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand, what's at his right hand? Pleasures. But what's physically at the right hand of the Father? Yahweh Shai is there, and what does he have in his right hand? He's got a book. Now, what does it say about his right hand? At thy right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. This word is your pleasure. To receive the discipline of Yahweh Shai is your pleasure. When we come on the Sabbath, you guys know, on the Sabbath, we're not supposed to do our own pleasures. We're supposed to do his pleasure. His pleasure is this word and his son. Does that make sense? So only once you surrender your will over to the will of the Father, will your anger begin to cease. You'll be able to control it a little bit more because you'll understand all of these things are working together for your good. Right? You'll start to understand only once you learn to truly forgive. Let's talk about that for a second. Truly forgive. If I bring it up again, am I truly forgiving it? No. So you need to learn to let that thing completely go. Don't just be holding on to a little piece like this and it's trying to get away from you. And as soon as it starts to get away, you just pull it back like this so that you can be angry. Oh, man. You pulled it back into your vision. Anybody ever heard of out of sight? Out of mind. Get that thing out of your sight. Stop being in places where you see the thing that makes you angry. Does that make sense? Okay, now watch this. Give me Psalms 37, verse 8. The scripture says, cease from anger. That's a commandment. And forsake wrath. That means stop planning your revenge. Fret not thyself in any wise to do evil. This word fret, let me make it more tangible for you guys. So back here on the stage, I have a guitar. You guys see this guitar? These pieces of metal that go across, what are those called? Frets. And what do I do with my hands? I press. So when the scripture says fret not, what does it mean? Don't press yourself to do evil. You don't have to feel press. Press is the root of the word pressure. Do not feel any pressure in any way, shape, or form to do evil. Does that make sense? That's when you free. That's when you really free. Okay, so how do we do that? We need to realize that Yah is all-powerful and all-knowing, and I know nothing. I need to just let him be Yah and me just be a student receiving some discipline. I need to stop trying to control everything, and then I'll stop being angry 100% of the time. Right? When you try to control everything, 
That's when you get angry. This is out of control. I used to be a control freak until the most high taught me that I can only control what is in my power. Does that make sense? So none of you are in my power. So I don't need to exercise any control over you. I need to control myself. That's the only thing that I have power over. Give me Romans chapter eight, verse 28. Watch this. The scripture says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love Yah, to them who are the called according to his purpose. If, if everything is working together behind the scenes, what you got to be angry at? You don't got to be angry at nothing. Even if it feels like something bad has happened, you need to exercise your faith and trust that it might look bad, but it's working together for my good. I believe what the scripture says. Now, this is one of those things where you have to actually put this into action. It starts with you saying it out of your mouth and it starts like this. It says, oh, I trust him. That's all you got to do. I trust him. It don't look good, but I trust him. You need to trust him. Sometimes you need to just admit to yourself that you trust him because you forget that you trust him. How'd you get here? I trusted him. <laughs> that bill that I thought I wasn't going to pay, how did I get it paid? I trusted him. You need to continue trusting him. Okay, so sometimes you're going to have to say that out loud, and then you're going to have to demonstrate it, and this is how you demonstrate that you trust him. You be still and know that he is Yah. Right? Because if you, if you really trust him, get your hands off of it. You stop trying to fix it. Stop racking your brain. Stop being so angry. Just relax. Take a deep breath. Let that anger go. And read this scripture one more time. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love Yah. To them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen. It's, look, it's, it's on the screen. It's on the screen. Okay. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 9. This is another commandment regarding our anger. The scripture says, be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. What does hasty mean? Fast. Whoa, we all need to slow down a little bit. You getting angry way too fast. You haven't even examined all the evidence. You already, you want to be mad. Some of us just want to be angry. I don't want to be angry, right? I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a slow down and listen a little bit more. I'm listening for the thing. Okay, you said that. Does that make me angry? No, I'm still good. I still feel pretty good. Okay, let me listen a little bit more. Okay, that happened. Yep. Does that make me angry? No. So you just presented to me the whole source of information, and I have no reason to be angry because I heard all of it. But if I don't listen to all of it and I get angry at the first part, you may have also presented the solution in the conversation, but I can't hear it because now I'm angry. And when I feel angry, I feel like I have to do something. I don't got to do nothing. Just be still and know that he is Yah. Now, the scripture says, be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. For anger resteth in the bosom of fools. What's the bosom? It's your chest. That's why we want to say it with our chest when we get angry. There's something boiling on the inside of you, this anger, and you're like, what? You pull your arms back, stick your chest out, because you're trying to get that anger. It's rest. Why is it resting here? Because you a fool. The <laughs> scripture because you a fool. Okay, there's something special about a fool. What does the fool say? The fool says there is no God. Okay, now here's the important part. If you know that there is a Yah, you cannot be a fool. So stop acting foolish. Stop being angry over every single thing that happens. You'll be like, man, I know all this stuff. It looks bad, but he's working it out for my good. Amen. Give me Psalms 14.1. Watch this. The scripture says, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. You don't want that to be your description. You don't want that to be your life. Amen. Show them a slate, a slide real quick. I want to talk about rage just a little bit more. See, rage is probably the scariest form of anger because rage is a form of possession. Now, when we're talking about unclean spirits, uh, we are using English words to describe emotions. 
And these emotions, these emotions have been around since the creation of the universe. Some of the things that we just naturally think you're supposed to feel that some of these emotions are okay. Rage is not one of them. Rage is an unclean spirit that temporarily prevents you from hearing the Holy Spirit. Something happens and you get so enraged, it cuts off your ability to hear the voice of Yah. That's an unclean spirit. And that rage takes over your mouth, your body, your fists, everything. And you become completely under its control. This is the reason why the scripture tells us that, watch, give me Ephesians chapter four, verse 26. This is the reason why the scripture says this. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Even if you feel rage, you're supposed to correct that spirit. You're supposed to cast it out. You're supposed to remember that the most high is working this together for your good. Maybe this thing is just a test. We all want to grow in the spirit, but all of us don't want to be tested to find out if we're growing. <laughs> Let something happen that gets you right to the point of rage. And if you go overboard, oh, you're going to get tested again. Something else is going to happen. You get right to that edge and you're like, Take that deep breath, relax your neck. You guys will see me cracking my neck all the time, especially when we pray, because I know that the children of Israel are stiff necked and I got to make sure that my neck is not stiff, right? Take a deep breath, relax, and then do what the spirit tells you to do, not what the rage is telling you to do. Amen. Why does the scripture on the screen say uh, not to let the sun go down upon your wrath? Why does it say that? What happens when the sun goes down on my wrath? Oh, I do. I leave a foothold for the enemy. What'd you say? It's a new day. It's a new day. What else? So I'm supposed to die daily. Okay. So if I die, when that sun goes down, when I wake up the next day, all of my hatred and my rage and my anger and everything should have died with that day. That's what it means to die daily. I can't, you woke up and you mad? You mad at breakfast? <laughs> you banging? No, wait, listen, watch this. Let me show you the reason. This is the precept. It says, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Because when the sun goes down and it comes up the next time, it's now not called anger anymore. It has transmuted itself into, that's good, but regret, resentment is going to produce a grudge. You got a grudge. You're not angry. That's a grudge. Give me Leviticus chapter 19, verse 17. I want to see how when you break this commandment, you were breaking the second greatest commandment. Watch. The scripture says, thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor. What does rebuke mean? Correct. So in any way that you can, you need to rebuke your neighbor, correct them, and not suffer. What's another word for suffer? Allow and not allow sin upon him. Don't let him keep sinning against you. you. You nobody's doormat. You are a child of the most high. But you have to be assertive with your anger in order to exercise that. Now look at verse 18. The scripture says, Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people. So if you wake up the next day and you still angry, what is it? It's a grudge. And what are you breaking? The commandments. Which commandments specifically? Look at the screen. It says, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. What commandment is that? That's the second greatest commandment. All the law and the prophets hang on loving the most high and loving his children. And if you wake up and you're still holding a grudge, I don't care how much tithe you give. I don't care how often you come to church. You are still breaking the commandment. You got to let it go. Amen. Okay. Let's talk about becoming a new creature. Give me a uh, second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17. Something about this new building I'll be forgetting to put my watch back on you guys because I'm, I'm very respectful of people's times. You know, those pastors who'd be like, and I'm closing now. And that means we got another 45 minutes and I'm bringing it to the end. Ha! And that means we got at least 30 more minutes. I look at my watch and I'll be like, I'm wrapping it up and we're going to be finished within 10 minutes. But for some reason, since we moved into the new building, I just, I don't even be paying. I forget to put my watch back on. <laughs> 
I'll, I'll be waiting for you guys to start yawning. Once Destiny starts yawning, I'm like, uh, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Look at, take a look at what it says on the screen. It says, therefore, if any man beware, this is how you're going to know if you're in Christ or not. Because we can get out of Christ and get back into the flesh. But the scripture says the flesh profit is nothing. Okay, so you need to get out of the flesh back into the spirit. Now it says, if, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. Old things are passed away. What passed away? All of my hatred, all of my anger, all of my resentment, all of my grudges. What did they do? They passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Here's the part that you may not be aware of. How often should I be in Christ? All the time. And if I'm always in Christ, then all things are, all the old things are always passing away and all things are becoming new. Does that make sense? How can you become a new creature if you still have all the same old ingredients in you? <laughs> I want you guys to imagine that you came over to my house and I was like, let's make a pie. Let's make a pie. And name some ingredients. You was like, I'm gonna get some flour and what you gonna bring some strawberries, right? What else? What else are we gonna put in our pie? All that good stuff. We're just going to take all of it. We're going to take everybody's ingredients and we're going to put it all in this pie. And we made this pie and we cut a slice and it is disgusting. It is, it's foul. It's nasty. And then Aaron says, let's make a new pie. Is it a new pie if I put all the same ingredients in it? <laughs> it's another pie. I made another pie with the same ingredients. Okay. How does that work for me? If I'm a new man, should I have all the same ingredients in me? No, see, so some of the ingredients that used to be in us when we didn't know the truth, we had lies in us, we had hatred, we had anger, we had resentment, we had all these ingredients, abandonment issues and all this stuff. Take a look at what it says on the screen one more time. You got to make sure that this word is getting in you. It says, therefore, if any man beware in Christ, he is a new creature, old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That means you ought to have some new ingredients in you. Ain't that right? Okay. Watch this. Let's take a look at the list of ingredients that we need to throw out. Give me Colossians chapter three, verse eight. The scripture says, but now ye also put off all these. What's the first one you need to get out? Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. If that was your ingredients before, you cannot still have that in Christ because that makes you the same. <laughs> You're the same as you used to be. If you were literally still constantly angry, trying to act out in your wrath, malice is evil intentions. If you're thinking about doing something evil, you thinking about payback, that's malice. Blasphemy is when you have the Holy Ghost and you know the Holy Ghost is telling you not to do that thing and you do it anyway. That's a lie against the truth. Filthy communication out of your mouth. You get so angry that you can't even use proper English anymore. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? Somebody ever gets so mad and you, you'll cuss, you'll slip up and do all that stuff? Yeah, not in Christ. Give me verse nine. Look at what it says here. It says, lie not one to another. That used to be one of our old ingredients. Seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. I'm not that man anymore. I'm in Christ. Give me verse 10. Scripture says, and have put on the new man. This is new ingredients, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. You need to be reformed into the image of Yahweh Shai. Amen. Show them a slide real quick. We're getting it in today. Have you ever thought about why? When you get so angry, you start shouting. Have you ever thought about why that is? Everyone does that. Little children do it. Old people do it. Whether you speak English or not, the more angry you get, the louder your voice gets. Why is that? I'm explaining it for you. See, somewhere along the way, we lost... Uh, track of the fact that your words are not how you demonstrate your communication. It's not how you demonstrate your heart. We used to speak heart to heart. I want to show you guys something really quickly. This is really weird. Um, in Western culture, if a man comes up to hug a man, we lean our hearts away from each other. 
and then we press up against each other like this, and then we release. It's not like that in Eastern culture. We put our hearts together and we hold each other heart to heart because it's the heart that is used to communicate. You can barely, just barely communicate with the father with your lips because out of your lips also come lies. Okay. So, but out of your heart, the most high, he literally says, I search the hearts. Now, somehow we instinctively know that if I get angry with you, you're going to move your heart away from me. And the farther your heart gets away from me, the louder I have to raise my voice. I'm still trying to speak to your heart, but as you keep moving away and I keep moving away and a fault gets created between the two of us, now I got to raise my voice because I'm trying to speak to your heart and you're hardening it. And so here's the thing. The unfortunate part is the more I raise my voice, the harder your heart becomes and the farther you move it away. Does that make sense? This is the reason why we shout when we start to get angry. Remember, show him a slide. Yahweh Shah himself said this. This is Matthew chapter 15, verse 8. This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. We need to get our heart closer to him. Amen. True communication is done with the heart. We knew this before well, i guess well, maybe when we were children some we used to know this we like we would sit down like mike when we had our serious conversation what do we have what do we call that heart to heart <laughs> right anybody ever have a heart to heart it's not a mouth to ears we're, we're having a heart to heart this is a deep conversation we need to get back to that because these heart to hearts will cut out all that anger that we're having amen all right i'm wrapping it up now what does that mean Within 10 minutes, we're going to be done. Are you holding anger? Show them a slide. I, I, I wrote five questions that you need to be able to answer so that you will figure out, so that you don't leave this place the same way that you came. Question number one. Somebody read it out loud. Am I angry with myself or with someone else? Am I angry with myself? That's what you need to figure out. It's going to help you get through your anger. Am I angry with myself? or with someone else, you need to identify the source. Sometimes we think we're angry at that other person and you're not, you're angry with yourself because you were not assertive. You let them step on you. You let them abuse you by saying it's okay when it's not okay. Does that make sense? Somebody read that number two. What is the cause? Why am I angry? I know what I'm feeling, but I don't even know why I'm feeling it. You need to identify the source. And if your anger is unrighteous, you need to repent. Forgive that person or forgive yourself and move on. Amen. Somebody read number three. Uh-oh. Am I, am I trying to get payback? Am I putting poison in your food? <laughs> am I seeking vengeance? If you have a desire to get even or harm the other person in any way, shape, or form, then you are not being led by the Holy Spirit. You are being led by your emotions. Amen. Somebody read the next one. Number four. Oh, the stuff that we feed, what, it, what does it do? It grows. It grows. The more you feed it, the more it grows. So like, uh, let's say, here's an interesting thing. When you block somebody on Facebook, do not find a way to go in and check and see if they're posting about you. You block them because you didn't want any information from them. Why are you sneaking and finding ways to go around and look at their page so that you can be angry? That don't make no sense. You know what? Hello? Nope. I'm blocked. And then the, the number comes up and it's restricted and you're like, I wonder if that's them. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh, it's you. Blocked. That don't make no sense. <laughs> Look, am I feeding my anger? Am I creating more situations for me to be angry about? If so, then you need to consider maybe on some level you want to be angry. Do you keep talking about the thing that made you so angry so that you can feel it over and over? Ah, that's feeding the anger. Somebody read that last one. Uh-oh, now we got to talk about spirits. Everyone needs to ask themselves this question. Do I have an unforgiving spirit? You guys know, the scripture says, and when ye stand praying, you're supposed to do something. What is it? Forgive. Why? 
so that the Father can forgive you. If you have an unforgiving spirit, you will be holding grudges. You will have a whole bunch of resentment. You will act out in your rage. You will find yourself in a lake that burns with fire because you cannot be this person and get into the kingdom of heaven. Does that make sense? Last selection of verses. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. This is going to give this selection of verse a whole new meaning now that you understand all these things about anger. The scripture says, trust. Sometimes you just got to say it out loud, huh? You just got to admit it. I trust him. I trust him. I'm not scared. I'm not angry. Even if it looks bad, what do I do? I trust. Trust in Yahweh with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. What's your understanding? They trying to get me. I got to do something. This is bad. How come our voice gets deep when we doing stupid stuff? <laughs> I don't know why they doing that to me. <laughs> right? That's weird. That's weird. Give me this next verse. Verse six. The scripture says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Let's pause right there. Acknowledge the source of your anger. No, it don't say that, does it? It says, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. You're not going to go in the wrong direction when you continue to acknowledge him. But if you acknowledge the source of your anger, you give the source of your anger power over you to make you do something. One last verse, verse seven. It says, be not wise in thine own eyes. Bars. <laughs> like that The Bible full of rhymes. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear Yahweh and depart from evil. That's what you do when you feel angry. You depart from evil. Amen. This is the message that I have for you. Show them one last slide real quick. One last slide. Anger is only one letter short of danger. That's a mic drop right there. Okay. This is the message that I have for you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah.